Eagles. There we go. I got to tell you, even though this wasn't a static fire of a particularly large rocket, this moment represented a highlight in my professional career because I got to witness something that virtually no other journalist saw. The second static fire of the RFA-1 rocket. And let me tell you something, it was an incredible thing to see, especially given the fact that I was about two kilometers away from the static fire at the time absolutely deafening at that kind of distance even if it was a pop bottle rocket compared to starship that being the case i was really optimistic for the future of uk spaceflight even though rocket factory augsburg is a german company this was a uk spaceport a spaceport with many customers many potential launches out of britain something that has never happened in the history of spaceflight and something that in my opinion desperately needs to happen all of that being the case though the future of sovereign british spaceflight is still in a state of extreme peril it's just not receiving the kind of funding it needs in order to have a sustained and competitive spaceflight industry in this country compared to the other enormous multi-billion dollar industries that they're going to be competing against even with fellow European nations like Germany, Italy, and France, who invest far more money in their spaceflight industries than Britain does. However, there is hope on the horizon. A committee formed by the present government in Scotland made a number of recommendations recently when it comes to sovereign British spaceflight and also Saxevoort Spaceport. And the recommendations that they made, if they are followed by the current administration, will transform British spaceflight in a huge way. Why? Because we're talking about a massive investment, hundreds of millions of pounds, if this committee's recommendations are followed. Good morning, spaceflight enthusiasts, and welcome to a special angry bulletin. Some very interesting news that became public only a few days ago, something I actually would have brought to you a little bit earlier, but all of my travel combined with the Mars life news kind of interfered with all of this, but definitely something that I want to make sure you folks are aware of. For the first time, the UK government seems to be getting very, very determined to achieve a sovereign launch capability, something that I and other advocates of UK spaceflight have been talking about for a very long time. But for a change, the government is now talking about a substantial investment. And this was put together by a committee in Scotland, a government committee in an official capacity who researched the UK's capabilities, especially when it comes to satellite deployment, because many, many satellites are manufactured in the United Kingdom, especially in Scotland, and yet virtually all of these satellites, well, actually 100% of these satellites right now, are deployed by non-UK launch providers, primarily the United States. Prior to the Ukraine war, the Russians deployed a lot of these satellites, really just not a great thing for the UK to be dependent on other nations to get their satellites up into space. But now circumstances have changed. Now this committee has researched the UK's capabilities and the UK's needs when it comes to these issues, and it's become very, very clear that Britain needs a sovereign launch capability, and also they need to invest a substantial amount of money in it, because right now the UK is unloading hundreds and hundreds of millions of pounds into the European Space Agency 
And in many cases, they're not seeing a tremendous return on that investment. There aren't lots of UK jobs being created as a result of this investment. And so therefore, this committee has made some recommendations in terms of direct support for UK spaceflight and for the UK space industry coming from the government that doesn't get sucked away by the European community. Now, they're not saying that the European Space Agency is going to get cut off, that they don't want to support ESA anymore or anything like that. ESA has accomplished some amazing things in the past, but still, it's time for Britain to support their own spaceflight industry, as Germany does, as Italy does, and especially as France does. And given that the size of the UK's economy definitely rivals France and actually exceeds Italy's, it's a bit ridiculous for Britain to not have their own sovereign capability. Now, the first thing I'd like to point out is that this committee was comprised of a bipartisan group of members of parliament, mostly Labour, though. Just keep in mind that the Labour government definitely supported this assessment because the majority of the representatives on this committee were made up of Labour representatives, but it also had folks from the Conservative Party, the Liberal Democrats, and, of course, the Scottish National Party, or the SNP. All that being said, though, they came to a united conclusion about where Scotland and the UK in general is sitting right now because of their lack of sovereign space flight and also a lack of sovereign space capability in general. For one thing, they found that Scotland's satellite launch sector is emerging as a key component in the UK space ambitions. Five of the UK's seven developing spaceports are located in Scotland including, of course, Saxavord in Shetland, reflecting Scotland's strong positioning to serve a growing global demand for small satellite launches. Scotland's unique location and existing expertise in building satellites makes it especially well-placed to offer end-to-end -end space capabilities from manufacturing to launching and use of satellite data. However, despite this strong potential, no vertical orbital launch has yet occurred from UK soil. There's been a horizontal launch, of course, from Spaceport Cornwall, but nothing vertical. Meanwhile, competitor European launch sites like Andoya in Norway have made rapid progress, meaning Scotland's first mover advantage is in danger of being lost. To date, this is number two, the UK government has supported the sector through funding, regulation, and strategic planning, including the National Space Strategy and Defense Space Strategy. However, considerable challenges remain. In particular, we are concerned about over-reliance on foreign partners, limited coordination across government departments, and a lack of long-term strategic investment from the UK government. Number three, while Scotland has the potential to become a global leader in small satellite launch, public investment in Scotland's launch sector is relatively low compared to other European nations. This puts Scottish spaceports at a disadvantage. The sector's potential will only be realized if the UK government commits to long-term coordinated support. We therefore call for a more sustained financial backing and for the government to act as a long-term customer to help secure the sector's commercial viability. Number four, we make a number of recommendations to help achieve this, including sustained investment and the UK government becoming a customer of domestic launch services. We also call for improved cross-departmental coordination coordination and for the government to broaden its funding approach beyond research and development to include support for manufacturing and commercialization. The report also identifies Saxavord as being the most advanced spaceport in terms of development so far. A full launch attempt, either orbital or suborbital, has not yet been conducted at the site, however. Following the decision by the CAA to grant launch company Rocket Factory Augsburg, or RFA, a launch operator license in January of 2025, it is expected that RFA will conduct an orbital launch attempt from Saxavord this year. 
other launch companies, including Orbex, Skyrora, and High Impulse, also aim to launch their rockets from Saxevoord. Professor Malcolm McDonald, director for the Center for Signal and Image Processing at the University of Strathclyde, highlighted the benefit of Saxevoord's status as a multi-operator site, as it helps reduce the risk associated with any single launch failure. The report, however, also highlights the rather anemic investment that the UK government has made in Scotland spaceports and in sovereign spaceflight in the UK since 2019. Only £97 million have been invested, with a further £37 million invested by the Scottish government. This includes an award of £10 million to Saxevoort Spaceport to support Rocket Factory Augsburg to launch from their site, 20 million pounds to the UK launch company Orbital Express Launch Limited, also known as Orbex, to build and launch a rocket from Scotland. I think it's pretty clear that in spite of the incredible things that the UK has been able to do with relatively modest investments, this is not enough to fund space flight. Not even close. They need a lot more seed money than that in order to make this work. And hopefully that's something the government's going to recognize after this report. Now, Orbex told the committee that they and the wider sector face a competitive disadvantage compared to European partners who receive substantially more government support. Orbex cited 2023 research which highlighted that France is investing four times more in civil space projects in the UK, Italy investing triple, Germany investing double, and Belgium Belgium investing double. They said a modest increase in UK government investment in space can take the sector a long way, which would help them gain a comparative advantage against European partners and, further than that, be competitive at a global scale. Orbex is concerned that the apparent disparity in government support creates an uneven playing field, making it more difficult for them to compete with better funded European counterparts. Furthermore, Orbex has called for greater investment in the UK Space Agency. Orbex said that with greater investment, His Majesty's Treasury could help catalyze private capital and ensure Scotland and the UK remains competitive in a rapidly evolving industry. Orbex also argued that if this commitment does not happen, Scotland risks being left behind and losing out on economic security and technological advantages to better prepare global competitors. The committee also highlighted a rather anemic investment in infrastructure for these spaceports, especially Saxevoord, which is operational but still doesn't have the necessary infrastructure to support a considerable number of launches. For example, in August of 2025, the CAA granted Scottish rocket maker Skyrora an operator's license to fly up to 16 missions a year from Saxevoord Spaceport. That's a Good news, right? Well, the current license is limited to suborbital launches of an 11 meter tall rocket, but despite Skyroar becoming the first UK based rocket company to receive a launch operator license, the company have indicated that they may need to look abroad for launch sites for its vehicle due to the limited availability of domestic launch facilities. The announcement of Skyroar's license marks a significant milestone, but the company Companies need to consider overseas options for launch demonstrates the risk that Scotland may not be able to capitalize on its geographical and regulatory advantages unless domestic capabilities are rapidly scaled up to meet industry demand. So the report makes a number of recommendations, but this is the one that stood out to me. Quote, to ensure the long-term success and competitiveness of launch sites in Scotland's space sector, we urge the UK government to incorporate space funding within its broader economic growth ambitions. This must go beyond ad hoc funding and reflect a sustained strategic commitment, providing the clarity, confidence, and stability that the industry needs 
needs to scale capabilities and attract international customers. A clear signal of long-term government support will not only level the playing field with better funded European counterparts, but also position the UK as a serious contender in the global launch sector. And Saks Avord Spaceport, which by the way shared this report with me, were clearly pleased with its contents. This is what Scott Hammond, CEO of Saks Avord, had to say, quote, I have been saying for a long time the government needs to up its game and get more fully behind the satellite launch sector, which with 10,000 small satellites expected to be launched in the next decade is as exciting a new growth opportunity as any. Other countries such as Norway, and this is truly international playing field, have provided much more financial support to their sovereign launch capabilities, and we need to follow suit in order to gain a significant share of a market that will be worth 28 billion US dollars and secure assured access to space for the UK. It is particularly pleasing that the committee recommends that the UK government should broaden its funding approach and become a long-term customer of, as well as an investor in, domestic launch services. This should be for both civilian and military satellites. I also welcome the committee's recommendations in relation to the Ministry of Defense, which it insists should integrate defense priorities into the launch sector and prioritize the procurement of homegrown responsive launch services. Let's hope that the government at Whitehall agrees with this committee in Scotland. Scotland. So once again, folks, I'm here in Australia. For those of you who aren't aware of that, um, I'm in Melbourne, actually. And I'll tell you, this particular hotel, the AC Hotel here in the city center, is just a fantastic place and also quite affordable if you're a Bonvoy member, especially. And no, they didn't sponsor this video. They're not supporting me or anything. I just think this is a great hotel. And I thought that I would mention it. Good place to go if you're happening to go to Melbourne. All that after. Having been said, though, I'm going to be traveling the country extensively. In addition to that, I'm going to be announcing a meetup on shorts. Um, make sure to pay attention to the shorts that come from my channel because I'm going to be announcing a meetup here in Melbourne probably in the next couple of days. We're talking maybe tomorrow night. So in any event, um, I'll check my schedule and make sure to announce this as early as possible. And finally... In terms of the topic that we just covered, in terms of British space flight and hopefully what is going to be a promising future for sovereign UK space flight, if you want this type of content to continue, if you'd like me to continue covering it, because it is a bit of a niche topic, not tremendously popular compared to others. And so the YouTube algorithm will say that nobody is going to be interested in watching this and they're not going to promote it very much. The only way to beat the YouTube algorithm is with direct viewer support like Patreon. So please check the description for ways to support this. I will make sure that you folks are kept up to date on upcoming launches from Saxavord. At least one, possibly two launches before the end of the year. Can't wait for that to happen. So until next time, stay angry about space.